Electromagnetic waves carry energy from one region of space to another. This energy is associated with moving electric and magnetic fields. From electricity and magnetism, we know that the energy density stored in electric fields U E equals one half epsilon naught E squared and energy density stored in a magnetic field U B equals one half B over mu naught B squared over mu naught. Thus, the total energy stored per unit volume in a region of space where there is an electromagnetic wave, we can say U equals UE plus energy density stored in magnetic field, which equals one half epsilon naught E squared plus one half B squared over mu naught. So if we simplify this a little bit by, by using the expressions that we found, uh, the relationship between magnetic and electric field where uh, magnetic field strength equals electric field strength over C. And then uh, as a C equals one over square root of epsilon naught mu naught, where epsilon naught is a free space permittivity and mu naught is a free space permeability. Um, and then uh, we can uh, we can kind of uh, we probably will need one over C squared, which would equal epsilon naught mu naught. Okay, first let's uh, plug in, uh, let's substitute the uh, magnetic field with uh, the expression that it is with uh, represented in electric field. Then our expression will be one half epsilon naught e squared plus one half e squared over c squared mu naught and then substituting the one over c squared so substituting one over c squared right here where you have a one over c squared we can rewrite this expression as one half epsilon naught e squared plus one half Okay, so we have um, epsilon naught mu naught e squared over mu naught. So if I cancel the mu naught out, we will end up having one half epsilon naught e squared plus one half epsilon naught e squared, and that will give us a result of epsilon naught e squared. Now I can um, write neatly. So the energy density, the total energy density stored in electric and magnetic field or electromagnetic field would be equal epsilon naught e squared or we can substitute our relationship um, between electric field and magnetic field and write it equals epsilon naught c squared b squared or b squared over mu, mu, mu naught uh, over mu naught um. so in other words electric uh, I'm sorry um, energy density um, in the electric field uh, energy, electric and magnetic field can be represented only with um, electric field or only with magnetic field or it could be also represented as both electric and magnetic field so let's see that would be epsilon naught e squared and that equals epsilon naught e c b 
So I could use one of the E to uh, E equals um, CB. So this is one of the E's, right? Um, and then, or I can write uh, that equals epsilon. I can substitute what is the C. So I can substitute uh, C to be equal one over um, one over epsilon not mu naught e times b here which equals square root of epsilon naught over mu naught e b so here uh, some uh, useful expressions for energy density that um, includes both electric and magnetic fields it can only include electric field or it can only include magnetic field now this was the energy density in any region of space at any instant now let's determine the energy the wave transports per unit time per unit area let us imagine now that the wave is passing through an area A that is perpendicular to the x-axis, as I showed in the picture. Um, in a short time, dt, um, and the dt, uh, in, in this short time dt, the wave is passing a distance of dx, so this little distance dx which equals c times dt the energy that passes through area a in the time dt is the energy that occupies the volume of dv so let's call dv which equals a time dx or equals a c dt the energy density U is equal to epsilon naught E squared. So the total energy DU would equal energy density U times dV, which equals epsilon naught e squared a c d t so then i can i can say the energy that is crossing the area a per time dt which i will write one over a du dt should equal epsilon naught c e squared so the energy the wave transports per unit time per unit area is given by a vector s which is called pointing vector so let's call it pointing vector um, the unit and, and pointing is actually a name of a scientist um, um, and uh, the uh, units of the pointing vector these units would be uh, watts per meter squared and the direction of the pointing vector in which the energy is transported is the direction in which the wave is moving so let me write it for you direction of s is same as direction in which the wave is moving So then I have the energy per time and per area 
this would be my pointing vector this uh, magnitude which will equal epsilon naught c e squared um, if we use uh, our relationship between e and b which is e equals c times b and the relationship that we found for the speed of electromagnetic wave one over square root of epsilon naught mu naught or it equals e b over mu naught now the direction of pointing vector um, s uh, as it is direction of uh, is along v then it is perpendicular to the electric field and it's also perpendicular to magnetic field then uh, we can write s the general form we can write s equals one over mu naught e cross product b okay so if we know a uh, pointing vector we can find the total energy flow per unit time uh, or to say the power so the power i'm gonna write power like this which is the total energy flow per unit time should equal should equal integral uh, of any closed surface so closed integral uh, through the loop so s dot product da Um, there is one more thing that I'd like to mention that electric and magnetic field we know that they vary per time so let me write it for you E and B uh, vary so the pointing vector S also varies per time so S also varies per time at any point so i can write that s x t equals one over mu naught e that varies um, per time at any uh, at uh, at any point so x t cross product b that varies per time at any x cross product but then but this time variation is so rapid that it's most appropriate to look at the average value of this so the average value we write as um, s a v uh, this uh, lines uh, and which is the magnitude of the average value at the point is actually called intensity so the SI units for intensity equals uh, it's of watts per meter squared SI units. Let's evaluate what is the average um, uh, average of the pointing vector or the intensity. For that, we will start from uh, this expression right here that I underline, uh, and then we will represent our e, uh, e and b in terms of the sinusoidal and uh, so sinusoidal functions so I can write it um, as s x t equals 1 over mu naught 
instead of EX, I'm going to write um, E naught cosine K, KX minus omega T. And the direction for electrom, uh, electric field is by the y-axis, so I'm going to put the j hat in here. Um, cross product of uh, B naught for the magnetic field, B naught cosine kx minus omega t. And then B, B naught is varying by the Z axis. So I have a K hat in here to make, to make sure that we take care of the uh, directions. So let's see, uh, J hat cross product with the K hat gives us an I hat. And if we uh, multiply the cosines with each other, then uh, cosine square kx minus omega t should be greater than zero, which is always positive. So our, uh, hence our s x t points in the positive x direction. Points in the positive x direction. which is the direction of the wave propagation. So now I can write the X component of the S vector. S X X T should equal E naught. Uh, I'm sorry, E naught, not epsilon naught. E naught, B naught over mu naught cosine square KX minus omega T. Uh, which is, uh, I am going to try to use a trig identity. Let's recall one wh where we have cosine 2 alpha equals cosine square alpha minus sine squared alpha, which equals, I'm going to modify this a little bit, cosine square alpha minus 1 minus cosine squared alpha alpha which equals 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. From here I can find the cosine squared alpha equals um, cosine 2 alpha plus 1 and 1 half. So if I apply this identity right here then I should be able to write uh, my x component of my pointing vector uh, would be uh, E naught B naught over 2 mu naught uh, cosine 2 oh I, I forgot the x in here okay so kx minus omega t plus 1 Now the average of this cosine average is zero. So then I can say S average equals E naught B naught over two mu naught. This time average value of the pointing, pointing vector is the intensity. So I'm going to write intensity, which is defined as the average power transferred across unit area equals S average equals E naught B naught over 2 mu naught or I can write E naught squared over 
2 mu naught c if I substitute the b naught uh, equals so if I substitute this b naught uh, with um, e naught divided by c um, I can uh, rearrange it a little bit more and substitute uh, the c to be 1 over epsilon um, c to be 1 over square root of epsilon naught mu naught then I would uh, get an expression that equals one half square root of epsilon naught over mu naught e naught squared or I can uh, still write this equals one half epsilon naught c e naught squared Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more examples on this topic.